Lesson 66, Sweet as Honey. First listen and then answer the question. What was sweet as honey and why? In 1963, a Lancaster bomber crashed on Wallace Island, a remote place in the South Pacific, a long way west of Samoa. The plane wasn't too badly damaged, but over the years, the crash was forgotten and the wreck remained undisturbed. Then in 1989, 26 years after the crash, the plane was accidentally rediscovered in an aerial survey of the island. By this time, a Lancaster bomber in reasonable condition was rare and worth rescuing. The French authorities had the plane packaged and moved in parts back to France. Now a group of enthusiasts are going to have the plane restored. It has four Rolls-Royce Merlin engines, but the group will need to have only three of them rebuilt. Imagine their surprise and delight when they broke open the packing cases and found that the fourth engine was sweet as honey, still in perfect condition. A colony of bees had turned the engine into a hive and it was totally preserved in beeswax. Lesson 67, Volcanoes. First listen and then answer the question. Why does Tazif risk his life like this? Harun Tazif, the Polish scientist, has spent his lifetime studying active volcanoes and deep caves in all parts of the world. In 1948, he went to Lake Kivu in the Congo to observe a new volcano which he later named Kituro. Tazif was able to set up his camp very close to the volcano while it was erupting violently. Though he managed to take a number of brilliant photographs, he could not stay near the volcano for very long. He noticed that a river of liquid rock was coming towards him. It threatened to surround him completely, but Tazif managed to escape just in time. He waited until the volcano became quiet and he was able to return two days later. This time, he managed to climb into the mouth of Kituru so that he could take photographs and measure temperatures. Tazif has often risked his life in this way. He has been able to tell us more about active volcanoes than any man alive. Lesson 68, Persistent. First listen and then answer the question. Why did Elizabeth tell Nigel that she was going to the dentist? I crossed the street to avoid meeting him, but he saw me and came running towards me. It was no use pretending that I had not seen him so I waved to him. I never enjoy meeting Nigel Dykes. He never has anything to do. No matter how busy you are, he always insists on coming with you. I had to think of a way of preventing him from following me around all morning. Hello, Nigel, I said. Fancy meeting you here. Hi, Elizabeth, Nigel answered. I was just wondering how to spend the morning. Until I saw you. You're not busy doing anything, are you? No, not at all, I answered. I'm going to... Would you mind my coming with you? He asked, 
before I had finished speaking. Not at all. I lied. But I'm going to the dentist. Then I'll come with you, he answered. There's always plenty to read in the waiting room. Lesson 69. But not murder. First listen and then answer the question. Do you think that the writer passed his driving test? Why? I was being tested for a driving license for the third time. I had been asked to drive in heavy traffic and had done so successfully. After having been instructed to drive out of town, I began to acquire confidence. Sure that I had passed, I was almost beginning to enjoy my test. The examiner must have been pleased with my performance, for he smiled and said, Just one more thing, Mr. Ames. Let us suppose that a child suddenly crosses the road in front of you. As soon as I tap on the window, you must stop within five feet. I continued driving and after some time the examiner tapped loudly. Though the sound could be heard clearly, it took me a long time to react. I suddenly pressed the brake pedal hard and we were both thrown forward. The examiner looked at me sadly. Mr. Ames, he said in a mournful voice, you have just killed that child. Lesson 70. Red for Danger. First listen and then answer the question. How was the drunk removed from the ring? During a bullfight, a drunk suddenly wandered into the middle of the ring. The crowd began to shout, but the drunk was unaware of the danger. The bull was busy with the matador at the time, but it suddenly caught sight of the drunk who was shouting rude remarks and waving a red cap. Apparently sensitive to criticism, the bull forgot all about the matador and charged at the drunk. The crowd suddenly grew quiet. The drunk, however, seemed quite sure of himself. When the bull got close to him, he clumsily stepped aside to let it pass. The crowd broke into cheers and the drunk bowed. By this time, however, three men had come into the ring and they quickly dragged the drunk to safety. Even the bull seemed to feel sorry for him, for it looked on sympathetically until the drunk was out of the way before once more turning its attention to the matador. Lesson 71. A Famous Clock. First listen and then answer the question. Has Big Ben ever gone wrong? When you visit London, one of the first things you will see is Big Ben, the famous clock which can be heard all over the world on the BBC. If the Houses of Parliament had not been burned down in 1834, the great clock would never have been erected. Big Ben takes its name from Sir Benjamin Hall, who was responsible for the making of the clock when the new Houses of Parliament were being built. It is not only of immense size, but is extremely accurate as well. Officials from Greenwich Observatory have the clock checked twice a day. On the BBC, you can hear the clock when it is actually striking because microphones are connected to the clock tower. Big Ben has rarely gone wrong. Once, however, it failed to give the correct time. A painter who had been working on the tower 
hung a pot of paint on one of the hands and slowed it down. Lesson 72. A car called Bluebird. First listen and then answer the question. What mistake was made? The great racing driver, Sir Malcolm Campbell, was the first man to drive at over 300 miles per hour. He set up a new world record in September 1935 at Bonneville Salt Flats, Utah. Bluebird, the car he was driving, had been specially built for him. It was over 30 feet in length and had a 2,500 horsepower engine. Although Campbell reached a speed of over 304 miles per hour, he had great difficulty in controlling the car because a tire burst during the first run. After his attempt, Campbell was disappointed to learn that his average speed had been 299 miles per hour. However, a few days later, he was told that a mistake had been made. His average speed had been 301 miles per hour. Since that time, racing drivers have reached speeds over 600 miles an hour. Following in his father's footsteps many years later, Sir Malcolm's son, Donald, also set up a world record. Like his father, he was driving a car called Bluebird.